How's everybody doing? Good. Good. So you've got some safeties back healthy. How does it feel to have a little bit of a more robust room now? Yeah, um, definitely sleeping better again. Uh, having having um, Juan come back, start to get back into the fold. Uh, really worked hard, you know, to get back on the field as soon as he could. Um, still doing, trying to do a good job of just working through him coming back off the injury. Don't want to like pile on 70 reps or anything like that. But the luxury of the room and the way that AB and his staff have built it, we can rely on those other guys, which we had to. You know, when we had those guys down, they did a good job. So, how much? How important? I, I know safety is important. And you don't want to diminish in other weeks, but. With Baltimore's offense specifically, with what Lamar can do, Derek, and as well as that receiving core, Mark, I mean, you just go down the line of your skill. How much more important, how much, how valuable are they going to be this week defending what, everything that Baltimore can do? Yeah, I mean, look, number one offense in the NFL, um, talent at all levels. Um, and at the end of the day, when, when they built this roster, you know, I know the, the personnel people, AB, brought people in here to be able to defend the offenses that, we're, that we got to play against in this, in this division. So the, the luxury and the, the reason that guys like Grant Delpit are here are to defend these type of players and that we see in this division, these type of tight ends, you know, JOK, right? I mean, to be able to uh, have him um, be able to match up as best you can versus a guy like Lamar. Like, so it's very, very important to have the safety and the quality safety depth we have to be able to match up versus this type of offense to tackle the back, you know, or the backs that you see in this division. Uh, you need those type of bigger guys, those physical safeties, but at the same time, they do such a good job. Coach Munkin does such a good job with the offense in terms of schematics that you, need, you can't just be physical brute. You got to have intelligence as well. And uh, again, we're blessed with, with the people that are in this building to be able to uh, match up with the scheme and also the personnel. You guys, are, you guys are kind of the last line of defense if Derrick Henry has a whole a full head of speed. How do you kind of prepare them to, to deal with him and tackle him? You have to rely on technique that we rep every day uh, in terms of tackling, right? The proper way. Um, open field tackling is an emphasis. You guys see how much you know, we work on that in individual. Uh, you see me with the goofy donut and standing on the back trying not to get chopped every time those guys come through. But the emphasis on those drills is really to make sure that you take your feet all the way to the human at the point of contact and then a violent wrap on the finish. It's going to happen. At the safety position, a ball is going to be running at you in the open field. The hardest thing, especially with football nowadays with the lack or the, 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 the lack of contact in practice environments is that's toned down. It's hard to rep that, so you got to find ways to rep that in practice as much as possible. We'll do it again today. We do it, try to do it every other day at least. You just got to rely on your on your technique and the things you've been working on since day one of OTAs, phases, early phases into training camp. I know Derrick Henry's a guy that sometimes makes people make business decisions. Um, do you guys talk about the commitment that is necessary to? Bring him down and face him, Absolutely. especially at one and six. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but um, I'm eager to answer the answer is absolutely. Um, no poodles in our room. Uh, we talk about it. We, we want to be physical. Uh, we, there's no shying of contact. In our room, like if you shy away from contact, D Bell's going to say poodle in the back, and, uh, he, and, and there's none of that. We have, to, we have to attack this game with the mindset of solving your problems with violence. And it's going to be a physical match it is I mean it doesn't matter what year or who's in the game when these two teams lock up it's going to be a violent brute you know fight and, and you got to match their intensity you have to be more violent than they are willing to be to give yourself an opportunity to win the game so 1000 percent we talk about it is it difficult I mean with a guy like that you know, I don't want to bring up a bad subject but the, thinking back to last year the Mika Fitzpatrick hit on Nick that in you know, a guy like that, a big, physical, strong guy, you know, you talk about hitting too high, you know, finding the right target zone to, to bring him down. How do you avoid going too low where, you, you know, you do, you don't just risk your own injury, but you, you risk injury to the, to the other player? No, it's a good question. Um, I think the biggest thing you have to understand, which is hard, people don't get this probably as much as they should, 
the areas of strike zones are highly dependent on the area of the field and the ball carrier in a millisecond of time. I think that's what makes these people so amazing in terms of the talent of the NFL. You know, where you track a player in terms of the target, where you're, where you're targeting and tackling, is dependent on where the ball is and who it is. So a lot of times inside of the box where some of our second level guys like Grant, a lot of times those targets will maybe more at the chest level to, 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 to uh, above, the thigh, above the waist because you're seeing the profile of the man. But when you're on the open field like Juan or sometimes Rocket, that target may drop a little bit more to the thigh board or on the sideline where you're in more in the open space. So it is really, really dependent on who it is, right, and where it is and the angle that you have on the, the person that you're tackling. So it's a complex, uh, a complex answer, but that's the reality of football, especially nowadays. Go, going back to Juan, he was talking last week that, you know, obviously last year he was dealing with a calf injury and he never felt like himself. So it was kind of important to him to get fully healed. How difficult was that to kind of balance wanting to get healthy? And also, I mean, I know he played the second half of that Dallas game with the injury. You know, yeah, you know, I, it was hard for him last year mentally. And we had to, we spent a lot of time uh, less coaching and a little bit more psychological work. Um, I will say he did a much better job this year. We addressed it at the very beginning. We were open about it, his feelings, my feelings, and we just put it out in the open. Last year was tough for him, you know, and it kind of got to him a little bit like anyone would. Injuries are hard for, for these players because they love the game and want to play. So for, for him, it was all right. You know you're going to have these moments of frustration to get back on the field. Let's fight that with continuing to stay locked in in meetings and asking questions as if you're going to play in the game, which I did regularly in meetings to keep him activated mentally to, to not allow his mind to drift so it was not easy for him for sure he did a much better job this year of staying ready and present and locking in on a date to come back and be able to like Jim talked about bring reinforcements and energy and juice when the when when we get these guys back which I felt like we've done you mentioned the matching up with those Ravens tight ends what do you see out of each one of them I know um, I think Grant mentioned likely his increased role and Andrews is coming on lately yeah, you know, last year being my first year in the division, watching, um, you know, watching 89, I just, I, I walked away from both games saying this guy is elite in, in his ability to move at his size, his ability to move his feet, his ability to press a ball, press a, uh, a DB, move his feet and swipe and his length and then to catch the ball. I mean, he's just truly a special, special player. I'll, I'll be honest with you, 80, uh, you know, likely started catching my eye last year in, in spots, and then now just it's not a secret. I mean, his, he, is, he is a pass catcher, but what is really admirable about him right now is his physicality in the, in the run game. Um, but, you know, so he's becoming this truly complete player. Um, and and it's, it, uh, they do a great job. I'll say their tight ends coach has done a great job in development. Um, and, and you can see that really even 88, you know, he, 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 he shows up on his yards per catch. Um, so they do a great job of developing that room. And, and that room's gotten better every year that I've seen. And I'm, you know, again, told the guys, there's opportunity out there to compete against some of the best group, maybe one of the best tight end groups in the NFL. Has Lamar somehow even taken his game up to another level this year? And just what are you seeing in him? Absolutely. Um, just, again, maturation over the years, uh, seeing him at Louisville, being in the ACC, and then now uh, really, really grown as a player. He's definitely grown and, and, and has a good understanding of, schematically, you know, what to do. You know, Coach Munkin's done a great job, you know, over the last two years of developing him and helping him grow into a, into a new phase of his career. Um, but his ability to just not run around and just to run, he can find players. He's moving to, 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 to throw now. Um, his understanding of getting the ball out when he needs to, his understanding of schemes and, and where safeties are and, and just knowing where to go with the ball in, in quick and efficient manners, really grown a lot. You remember the first time you faced him? Mm -hmm. You, you remember the first time you faced him? What that um, was like? You know what? He just had just left, but I, I remember watching the tape getting ready for Louisville, and <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was just uh, I was amazed uh, at his ability, his talent. But you know, he's a, he's a he's a Palm Beach he's a Palm Beach kid, um, growing growing working in that area and recruiting that area. His legend is is uh, is pretty big. Um, He's a hell of a player. He was then in high school and into college and, and obviously proving himself at the highest level now. 
you know, obviously a quality MVP candidate at the end of the day. One more? We're good? Okay. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. So how did Nick do in his first game back? Did good. Um, I remember coming in here last week and talking to you guys about just, you know, excitement as far as in the building and Nick getting ready to play. And the most important thing is protecting Nick from Nick. It's funny because on the sideline, when he did come off and I'm getting certain personnel ready to go in, every time I take two steps, he was right there. <laughs> so I moved to the right, he's right there. I was like, okay, first time, I said, I'm all right. Next time I moved to the left, I turned to my right, he's right there. I'm like, Nick, how about you go, all right? <laughs> so it was exciting just to, um, the energy that he brought, uh, of course, to the stadium, the energy that he brought to the team and being able to score a touchdown was awesome. I know you're not preparing to face him. You know, you don't have the game plan for him, but as a fellow running back, as a running back yourself, what do you, what makes Derrick Henry so special? What, what do you, you know, when you've seen him play, what separates him from all the other greats? Yeah, when you turn the film on, of course, you see a back that has great leg drive, um, hard to tackle, no matter if it's short yardage, no matter what the situation is. You see a good back that runs behind his pads well. But a lot of people skip over the vision. He has great vision, man. I mean, here's a guy, of course, you saw it when he was at Alabama, the way he was running those mid zones and gap schemes. Um, he come to the next level and he's able to do some of the same things, but the vision is skipped over. I think he has second, I mean, next level, not second, next level vision. Going back to Nick, when you were watching that film, did you have like a, oh, that's Nick or Nick's back moment that stood out? Um, I had those in practice, you know, just seeing him run around the way he did last week, um, just preparing him for the week. And I, I, I think Kevin did a great job as far as putting the plays together, making sure, once again, we protect Nick from Nick, um, having him as far as being a decoy, going out there and also getting the ball and not putting too much on him. I thought it was tight game plan. So, but yeah, I, I saw Nick last week and I was excited for him. He was so good. I mean, one of the top whatever running backs in the league before the injury. Is it, is it fair to expect him to be the same back again given that it's two, in, two huge injuries on the same knee? Yeah, that's fair. That's yes, I do. And it's because of how hard he worked, the dedication, the commitment. A guy like that, that, you know, he shuts down the building and he opens the building. And he puts in a lot of work, a lot of effort. And he's going to keep doing it until it's right. So that's fair. He said last, when we talked to him Wednesday, that, you know, he saw Rust being his first game back in 13. He saw who? I'm sorry. Rust. He, had oh, Ru okay. he was yeah. Rust yeah. coming back. He'd been 13 months. You know, he mentioned tripping over himself. Um, do you think that'll go away pretty quick and he'll get back to feeling like he, you know, having the reps that he's always had week in and week out. Yeah, if you know Nick like I know him, he's watched that play probably 10,000 times, you know, and he's telling himself over and over again, I got to pick my feet up. I got to pick my feet up. But that happens. And, you know, you're excited to be out there. Um, as soon as you see a crack or something that can potentially be a hold, you go faster than usual. So uh, Nick and I had a conversation about it, and he'll be a lot better as we go. How about uh, the fact that you guys are facing representation of, of their uh, run defense, or does it have something to do with how, how the games have been going? No, that's accurate. Uh, huge challenge in front of us. Uh, it's one you got to get up and be ready for, and you got to turn cracks into holes as running backs, and that's what we talk about in my room, being able to turn a crack into a hole and understand, just take what they give you. Uh, you know, if it's two or three yards right there in front of you, you got to go get it. Don't be looking for the big play. The big play will come. What impact do you think uh, Jameis will have on, on the offense this week? Well, you saw it in practice also. You know, just his leadership skills, being able to get the guys together, um, getting, getting the guys in and out of the huddle, uh, just doing some of those things, and also keeping them after going over plays, making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, he's a good leader. He's spent a lot of time with Naheem over the last several months. How disappointing was it that he wasn't able to come back this year? Of course, it's very disappointing when, you know, as a player, you're working hard, you know, you're working for the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to get back out there and play, of course. 
um, and it didn't work out for him. Uh, but, you know, I see Naeem every day. He comes through that door into the meeting room with a smile, and he's ready to learn. Also, he's helping everybody in the room, so he's still engaged. Um, he's not letting that bother him, and he's also working his butt off. You talked about Nick can serve as a decoy for offense or for defenses. They're going to give him a lot of attention. Just how valuable is it to have a guy like that where defense will give him attention that can open up the game for other people on the offense? Yeah, to be a decoy, it, it speaks of about your body of work over the years. And we know what Nick Chubb has been around here. We know what Nick Chubb has been to the league as far as the work he's put in. Um, but it has to be a mixture, you know. Of course, you want him to be a decoy, but you want him to have the ball too. So you kind of, Coach and I kind of talk about that. And like I said, Coach does an awesome job, man, uh, putting him in positions where he's going to get the ball, but also be a decoy. Along those lines, did you, did you notice like how prominent his presence was in helping the play action game? This week, because it seemed like you know linebackers had to be a little bit more respecting of Nick being back there, and it seemed like some things kind of opened up for when Deshaun was out there, and then when um, Dorian and James took over. Yeah, that's one of the things we talked about, and um, it's one of the things that we harp on as coaches, being able to get Nick back, and to your point with the play actions, the neckets, the keepers, being able to show that same run action as if he's having the ball to get those linebackers to step up, to get those safeties to be a little nosy so we can take a shot or even throw some deep overs. I mean, it, it's the it's you know, it's the Nick Chubb effect. So you get him out there once again, you know, you want to give him the ball, but also you want to use uh, the respect that he has around the league from other coaches and coordinators and players as a decoy also. He certainly came back willing to pick up the blitz and block, right? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. He didn't have no problems with that. How tough was that one on the goal line? It looked like he was still kind of going through his fake, and but he's able to turn enough to get a piece of that guy. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Um, and it goes to show you, you know, a lot of times uh, the question is, will he be hesitant, you know, from a player that has a serious injury, or will he be able to let it go? It's two plays in that game you can go back and look at, and you can answer those questions. Of course, the touchdown when he was able to spin back on the knee and hit it, and that play, of course, protecting the quarterback, knowing he couldn't go to the right of him. He had to go left and get back and cut the guy. So he did that in the blink of an eye. I know you don't coach against him in this matchup, um, but we've asked so many people this week just about Derrick Henry and, and obviously being a running back by trade. Just what have you noticed about his uh, – his game and I couldn't hear the last part. So. Just, just what have you noticed about Derrick Henry, and on the other on the other side of the matchup for you guys? Yeah, I mean, kind of spoke about the vision already, um, which I think is second to none. But also, just you know, he's one of those. Just you give him the ball, he may get you three. You give him the ball, he may get you four, minus two. Next thing you know, it's sixty. You know, as a big guy like that, you think, okay, when is he gonna slow down? All right, you saw him in Tennessee with a bunch of these long runs. You're right, man. All right, he's now in Baltimore. He can't go 60 anymore. He can't go 50 anymore. <laughs> Please. He got it all on film. It seems like he gets better with time. Yeah, so, I mean, nowadays the running backs are out of the league a lot faster. To, for him to be doing it at whatever it is, 30, 31, yeah. I mean, that says something, doesn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. We've, we've seen Pierre take advantage of some opportunities in the last few weeks, which is what have you seen from him and his growth since you've gotten here? Oh, it's a good question. You know, talking about his growth, just coming through the building, being able to evaluate film. I saw a player that had juice, had energy, had speed, had quickness, um, something that we were looking for at the running back position. And he was able to go out there also and dominate on special teams. So to see him go out there, dominate on special teams, be tired out there, still come in and have some second and third down um, reps was awesome. I got to get more out of him. I got to put him in a position so he can make more plays, and I will. But Pierre's been great. Good. Good. Good.